Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in today's video, we are working on the D-Max and we've got some upgrades underway. We have been rocking the Storm Mod for a while now. You've seen it in all the videos. You've seen it go up the cape and back and all the bits and pieces. If you haven't seen the build of this, and more importantly, today, we're working on the stuff in the back there, the 12 volt. If you haven't seen that, I'll make sure I link those videos down below. But it is gonna get a birthday and that's what this video is all about. And we are doing version two of Storm Mod and I can't hardly wait. We are upgrading the absolute absolute bejesus out of it. We are gonna run basically a little power station there. We're running a couple of the light time 200 amp hour batteries. So we're gonna have 400 amp hours in there. We're going full electric people, no more gas that is gonna be coming on Video Show Me How Trips. We've got big inverters. We've got a whole bunch of Victron energy products. I can't wait. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be pro. Without further ado, Let's get started. So we've been running Stormod version one for a little while now, and it's been faultless. I've been really happy with how it's been going. Everything is the same as you saw in the original videos. We're going to basically be upgrading that. To do that, we're gonna to need to remove some of this. We're keeping the front two storage bins. They're gonna stay the same. They've been working really, really well on trips. Nice and easy access to be able to get in and access all of our camping gear and, and pegs and that sort of stuff. All of that jazz, that's staying the same. This back bin though is gonna need to get changed. And the main reason for that is we're going to some big boy batteries and that is these here. These are the Lightime 200 amp hour plus, but ultimately what it results in is a 400 amp hour battery bank that will live in the back of the D-Max, allowing us to draw up to 400 amp discharge on this continuous, more than enough to run our 3000 watt inverter and a whole bunch of solar in that we're gonna be upgrading as well. To do all of this, we need to modify our back bin. We're gonna have a new structure in there that's gonna kink around to the side here. It's gonna have a bit of a dog leg to the right. Our water tank there, as awesome as the pack off-road water tank is, I highly recommend those if that's the kind of setup you're going for. We no longer need that because Underneath here, you'll see in a separate video, we've managed to squeeze two water tanks underneath, a 40 and a 30 at the back there. So we've got 70 liters of water underneath, so we no longer need the 40 at the back, which gives us a bit more room. For me, that's gonna take a little bit of time to get all worked out and get all that built through, but for you guys with the wonders of the internets, that'll be done in a jiffy, and we'll get straight on to installing all of this. Now just quickly too, if you are interested in the Storm Mod concept and everything that it has, head on over to the website, videoshowmehow.com, head to the Storm Mod section, register interest. Version one is sold out and there is no more version one. The good news is though, version two is around the corner with a few extra additions. So if you're interested in any of that, head on over to the Video Show Me How website and register your interests. And here we go, here is where we're up to. If you've been following over on the Instagram, you'll see a few posts with this guy, a few sneak peeks, this is the the Tower of Power, and what we have going on here, we have both of our 200 amp hour plus light time lithium batteries in here. So we've got a total of 400 amp hours, 400 continuous draw. Next steps here, I've already started, is skinning the whole thing. When you do that, it tightens everything up. Like it's already, it's already sturdy. I can move it around just by grabbing one of them. So super strong stuff. Adding the skin to it just takes it to that next level, makes it really, really, really strong. Now, as far as gear goes, this is the diagram. This is the wiring diagram or the rough version of what I'll be installing into Stormod version two. And this is what it looks like in reality. So running through there, we'll be going our negs through our recycled BMV 712. That's the Victron unit there we'll use from version one. Running through a big boy fuse, of course, into our master disconnect switch, and then into our Lynx distributor. From there, we've got a few things going in. We've upgraded our solar controllers from our old versions. We used to have a couple of the 7550 15 smart solars in there. We're upgrading those guys to a 20 and a 30. As of the time of this video filming, they've just brought out their new Buck Boost 50 amp DC charger. So it takes away all, if you're familiar with these, you'll know that even with this ridiculous heat sink going underneath oh, there, these guys run super hot. We'll run this for the moment. I normally see about 25 amps, but obviously 50 amps is gonna be the way forwards. We've got to upgrade the D-Max alternator and we'll have you to do that. So ultimately you'll see that in a future video and we'll upgrade this guy to the 50. And then we'll also use, this is our aux beam DC power distribution. And then finally, we will be of course running the big boy inverter, the 3000 watt inverter. That's our next bit. We'll get all of that skinned. 
and then we will get it all into the back here which I'll just give you a little bit of an update. This is what's going on in here. So we're keeping the original two storage bins. They've been working flawlessly. We do have the big boy that will be coming out there, which is a, a basically a combo version of both of those bins in V2. So keep an eye out on StoreMod on the video show me how website, video show me how.com. Here's our extra bit. So we're using the existing over arch. We've just added the extra bit. So it'll give you a full length there. The tower of power will go right here and it sits up to about the window height there at 600 high. So you can kind of see what's going on here, right? So that'll all be one open inside. We'll be able to link it all around and we'll have a little dog leg around to the right there. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'll get the tower power all sitting in there ready to go so we can start planning out our cabling. That's a big thing before we get that ready. I'll bring all of our extra components. We'll sit it all in here and then I'll bring you in and we'll have a bit of a look of where we're gonna put everything before we get stuck into doing all the wiring. Right, so sit rep, this is where we're up to. We've skinned all of our box and our tower of power that's sitting over there. We have to do a fair bit of head scratching to work out how we're gonna make everything fit. We do have our big boy cabling in here as well, which does bend, but doesn't bend massively. So I had to really think about how all of our cable runs were gonna work. We had to increase the size of the back of store mod here as well to enable the full height of the battery module so what this is going to enable us to do is give us plenty of bend sort of radius as the big boy cables come through from the battery module that lines up perfectly to this so you can kind of imagine that big hole is where the battery module will go. As far as everything inside here, we have our back wall here with all our charges. So we've got our 20 amp MPPT, our 30 amp version, and then our Ryan Smart, that's a DC-DC. That will be getting replaced to the 50 amp version in the future. And then around the side here, we have our DC-DC uh, distribution box. And we have a nice little run in the leg here where all the cables can easily come in with the big ones and we've got more than enough bend radius underneath here for the smaller solar charges and our DC DC. All right, so next step for me here now is to pull this guy back out. I'm gonna do all of the wiring now inside here. We're not gonna go into crazy detail. Version one of StoreMod you'll see in the video description there below if you're interested. Is it, It's effectively the same thing there, the main difference being the distribution box. We'll then get that back in, and then last of all, do the final connections to the battery module so we can start giving this guy a test. So we're in, everything is nice and installed. We've labeled everything, we've gone to town. Sneaking underneath there, if I can just take that off. I don't think I've fully bolted it down. We are sneaking in our air compressor. So we've made a little change there. We've been able to uh, turn it over to its side there and, and that'll enable us to, to get that in there, which is great. All our wiring is complete now. We've got our isolators in here. We've got the Victron Lynx distributor. That is all wired up here as well. Ready to go there. I might just jump around the other side and we'll show you the view from that side. Having a look at our wiring here though, we have our big boy cables. They're ready to go as far as attaching to our battery bank. That then runs through our big boy battery fuse there, which is one of the, the mega fuses through up into our 12 volt isolator switch on the side there, and then through to our Lynx distributor. Out of there, we have our main two guys here. These are the main leads that come through and will be running up to our inverter. So that's those guys there. We have our big boy earth as well. This is this one here that runs through out the back of the tub. It's a big pass through and we've found a big chassis mount as well that isolates and earths the whole Lynx distribution system. So that's great. Underneath here, we have our aux beam power distribution, our DC distribution block, which then links through to our switches there at the front. So. That's all ready to go, and we've got all of our leads coming in from the front there. We'll have a look at that in a sec. That's the same as StoreMod version one. And then over the back here, you'll notice we're missing a blue box. That's because we did have our DC-DC that's going to live there. It's not there at the moment because I'm gonna go straight to the new version. So I mentioned that a little bit earlier. As I was wiring everything up, I just, as I was putting in, I thought, let's just go straight to the 50 amp version, the new version that's just come out from Victron. So that is on order. So you'll see that in a future video. We do need to just get our front fan. So this guy is gonna go on the front just here, uh, that way around, and it's gonna live right there. So 
you'll see in a minute. We'll jump over there and have a look at our tower of power. This guy is going to live right there on our front skin, and that's going to be extracting out and, and blowing air out. That's a bit of an overview of all of our wiring. Of course, we will be zip tying and, and going to town just to make it a little neater and tidier once I've done some testing. But let's jump out there and have a look at the completed tower of power. And here we go. This is what it looks like on the inside with that skin in there coming up to about there. We still have plenty of wiggle room for our terminals. They're all isolated anyway, but having that skin on there, like I was saying at the start, locks all of this together. So this becomes a super, super strong structure and nice and tidy. If you have a look at the back, this fan, we've got that all sealed. That's gonna be sucking in. So we can see in there, there's our fan. Same as what we look, just looked at there on the, on the other one. It's gonna be sucking air in there through our plugs or, and top and bottom, of course, of our inverter. Then at the back here, we also have our two big fans that also kick on if things get a little warm. So that's our tower of power, our battery, lifetime battery module. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. The next step here, guys, is we need to get our battery module, put our uh, back plate on and lug that sucker over to here so we can get it into place. We'll then need to connect up our cabling. Once it's all in there, I'll get all of that part wired up. And before I go putting all the skins and everything back on, I'll come back to you and show you it all working. Right, uh, so here we are, we are all in and all done. And it's actually been about a week because I've been testing the living daylights out of this. We do have a, a semi big trip coming up soon. Hence why I've got the Starlink hiding in the back there and, and what's ha what have you, we're just, we're just starting to set up for it. So I've been testing the completed Storm Mod version two out over the last, last week or so. I've been running absolutely everything I could possibly run off the inverter here with the light time battery bank in there. And I'm pleased to say everything is working A-OK -okay and working perfectly. We can see the full setup going on here. Like you saw there before, it's all buttoned up. We have our fans sucking in there, blowing out there, venting up the top there, and it's all thermo controlled by the temp monitor like we saw just before. I'll fire that up in just a sec and show you. We've got our output up the top there, a little air output right there at the top. We are gonna get our hose reel connected this guy here is gonna live up in the corner. So that way, when you're pumping up tires and that kind of thing, we'll have easy access, just like we did in version one. We can just sort of pull that out and away we go, pump up the tires. So still nice and easy access to our storage bins at the top here, just like normal. Nice and easy, easy to get to camping gear. This one's got pegs and all sorts of camping stuff in it. And of course, still nice and easy access to our power board here, our waterproof power board from the inverter. Everything else is working as it should. The solar, the solar charge controllers, this is just our waterproof housing that gets power back into the canopy. We've got our little 100 watt panel here and on the trip with the rooftop tent, we have another two of those. So we have a total of 300 watts coming in from the roof, comes in through there, down underneath the back here, through our sort of conduited bits and pieces here, like you saw in the video, comes through there, down into our MPPT chargers and then the live view here we can either see on our screen or on the app we can see that we're getting even today it's a little, a little cloudy but we're still getting some current in 100 percent on the batteries here at the moment if i just trigger that relay i can sort of show you how that works as well so that's the fan sucking in there blowing out there we do have that all set up here on the relay so as soon as it gets over that 35 degree mark it'll kick in a gear we can force it though there we go we just heard the click and that's it in action there so we're sucking in there and blowing out there and those server fans do a great job. They're an IP67 sort of a brushless fan, so uh, they should go really, really well. So pretty stoked with that. Cool how that works all by itself. Everything else on our panel is working. We do have our inverter switch here at the top, which turns that on, which then activates our little power strip there. And then all of our different lights here. We can fire up that air compressor that's hiding in the back there. We've got our little side lights which are those ones that you can turn on and off, that sort of stuff. Our interior light, which is nice and easy to activate there. Uh, this power turns all of this stuff on. We've got our fridge and our aux, which are these. There's our solar input for our big uh, 30 amp MPPT. So I can put a big solar blanket or a couple of those, no worries at all. This fan here actually activates our canopy fan, which is this guy here. And this is what that looks like on the outside. So that's designed so i've got to really pro probably test this out since the cape trip we've got a still got some dust inside even though i sealed it this has got a big filter 
uh, that sits underneath here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's, I might put my fingers in there with the fan working, but you can see the filter in there. And what that does is sucks that air through the filter, gets a bit of positive pressure in the canopy after it's all sealed up and then sort of helps keep dust out. So that's that working as well. Everything is all connected and working as it should. So that's it for Storm Mod version two. This video is probably long enough already. So if you stuck around to this long, big thumbs up to you. The lifetime battery bank in there, I'm really interested to see how that goes and how far that gets me at 400 amp hours. You know, 5,000 odd watt hours is absolutely ridiculous. So really keen to see how that goes. If you are looking at some uh, lithium batteries and you're interested in those lifetimes, they have been generous enough, generous enough to give us a bit of a discount. So I'll, I'll put all those details in the video description. If you are in the market and you're looking at those, you might as well get some bucks off, right? So use the link in the video description. From here, we've got a couple more videos to do on the Storm Mod version two. We're gonna be installing the Victron Buck Boost system. That's that 50 amp charger. We'll be putting that in. That'll be in a future video. I do have the video for the water tanks, a bit of an overview of how that's all worked, how we've got our pump underneath there and how we sort of ran all the, the plumbing and all that sort of stuff for it to all work. So that'll also be in an upcoming video. And then no doubt a few other testing videos with this guy as well. I'd like to say that's probably it for, for Storm Mod, but uh, knowing me and history on the Steam Works, no doubt there'll be future modifications in the future. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you hit the, hit the old button if you're interested in more of these videos. If you're looking at something in particular or keen to know more about any, any parts of the Storm Mod and want me to dive into a little bit more and perhaps another video just let me know in the comments down below but other than that guys thank you very much for watching i hope you have an amazing day and i'll see you in the next video cheers guys